All right, let's talk about Joyride by Jack Ketchum. Okay, uh, first off, I have to say that this is my second time ever reading Jack Ketchum. The first time around, the first book I ever read by Jack Ketchum was The Girl Next Door. And if you're not familiar with that one, that one is based on a true crime case. Um, it was a girl named Sylvia Likens, and yada, yada, yada. It was based on a true crime case. Very gruesome torture kind of stuff happened to this girl. They tortured her until she was dead, and that's how we're going to talk about that book. I did do a review of that one, but it was a blog review. I did not do a YouTube video for that. So this is my first ever Jack Ketchum video review. Um... If you're like me, you probably originally heard of Jack Ketchum from Stephen King. Um, Stephen King had always mentioned and raved about Jack Ketchum's uh, works. He's, you know, said that he was an influence on his writing. Um, also, Chad Lutsky has said that Jack Ketchum was an influence on his writing. And after having heard that from both those authors and being familiar with those two authors, I can very much see that after having read, like, another book by Jack Ketchum. Um, Chad Lutsky, I can kind of see the raw, brutal emotion, emotional kind of stuff. Like, I can see that influence in Jack Ketchum's writing. I can see how he influenced uh, Lutsky. And the way, just the way that Stephen King writes his characters and his dialogues and different scenarios and stuff, I really kind of see he kind of got that from Ketchum after having read this one. Now, this book is about Carol and her lover, Lee. Um, they basically, Carol has an abusive ex-husband. I mean, like, dog shit abusive guys, like... And that's another thing I should probably mention before we get into this. If you are triggered by anything, you're probably not going to want to read this. Um, this has a lot of triggering stuff in it. It has rape. It has abuse against women. Um, it, there's just a lot of stuff going on in this book. And like... Uh, yeah, that's why I'm just going to say, uh, if you have triggers, you're probably not going to want to dip your toes into this book. You're not going to want to check it out. Just, just leave it at that because, you know, I don't want to spoil it for people who might want to read it. But if you are easily triggered, you're not going to want to read this. <laughs> this is a very fast-paced book, by the way. Um, just like it says on the little blurb from Stephen King, you know, it's it's such a it's such a quick, fast-paced read. Um, it was under 300 pages. I think this was 243. Um, my copy includes a bonus novella called Weed Species. We're not going to talk about that because I stopped reading this once I finished Joyride. So I will go back and read the novella and then I will rate and review that later at a later time. But we're here for Joyride. We had to go back to where I was before... Okay, so we got Carol and Lee. Uh, Lee is her new lover. And just dealing with her abusive ex-husband, the guy's still in the picture, still pops in, feels like he has the need to bully and harass Carol. So Lee and Carol come up with a scheme to get rid of him once and for all. And then this random, this rando totally, like, witnesses the crime... And then he uses it against them to try to sock them, sucker them in to going on a journey with him. And it's basically his killing spree, and he wants them to witness it. And one thing leads to another, and I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna spoil it. I'm not gonna say what happens at the end. I'm not gonna spoil like what happens along this journey. But, you know, it, it was interesting. It's very fast-paced. Very short chapters, I gotta say. Um, like, this probably could have been condensed into a much smaller book. So if you're thinking, oh yeah, look at the thing. It looks like it's gonna be this big, bulky book, but it's not really. It's, uh, yeah, well, it's a decent spacing and, and font and everything. But, yeah, it's definitely something you can read in a very short time because it's very fast-paced. Um, the events happen relatively quickly. Um, at the end of the book, for you people who are into writing, and if you're interested in writing processes, um, Jack Ketchum explains how he came up with the idea for Joyride and how he decided to write it. 
he explains how he plots his stories and stuff like that. And this is also based on two other true crime stories. I don't remember the names of the fellas, but I do remember this one of the stories. So, yes, it does have that going for it. And I kind of wonder if he gets a lot of his ideas from, like, events that have happened and he kind of, like, like uses them as a starting point and kind of evolves it from there. I'm not really sure, but, you know, hey. Okay, so with all that out of the way, another thing I kind of wanted to add was, like, I feel like, at this point, having been this be my second book read by Jack Ketchum, I kind of get the feeling that Jack Ketchum loves to shock his readers. And I say this because there was one scene you come across. It's like probably like about halfway through the book. And there's this one scene, and it's like, really? Did you really need to add that? Because it was really fucked up. And it had to do with the one main character who's like kind of roped everybody along for this little trip. And it just made it seem made him seem even more fucked up. And it was just kind of, I felt like it was a very unnecessary scene. Like, I get it. We get that the main character is a fucked up individual. He's a fucking psychopath. And yeah, we got that from the events in the book. But you really didn't need to take it up another notch and over the fucking top, Jack Ketchum. You just did not need to do it. But it was there, it happened, and yes, it was awkward, and oh, it was so unnecessary. One of the things I do want to say, I already threw out there, if you have triggers, you're probably not going to want to read this, but let's talk about the people who would like to read this. Um, if you are someone who is a fan of Stephen King, you've read a lot of Stephen King, and you want to dip your toes and find out what his, some of his influences are, you're going to want to check out Jack Ketchum. Um, if you're someone who seeks out and maybe listens to true crime podcasts, you're going to want to check this out because I feel like you're going to be in for a doozy with this one. Um, you might even recognize the cases that are kind of like, they're kind of, you know, done around. You might get something out of this. Um, if you're a fan of Chad Lutsky, you might want to check out Jack Ketchum. You might enjoy this book as well. But yeah, um, yeah, guys, uh, for all the hype of Jack Ketchum's works, and I did enjoy this. I mean, enjoy is such a weird thing to say with the, the events that happened in Jack Ketchum's books, so I don't know if enjoy is the right word, the right thing to say. Okay, I... I got something out of the reading experience. Um, I gave this a 3 out of 5 star rating on Goodreads. Like I said, I felt like the one scene was just very unnecessary. Way over the top. I get it, Jack Ketchum. You're trying to you're trying to shock us. And you shocked us. You shocked us. And then you went a little too far. A little too far. But yeah, you know, it is its own thing. It's its own animal. I can, I can appreciate it on the... I'm, for what it is, I can appreciate it. And, um, yeah, it, it, like I said, it is what it is um, in this day and age. Oh, and that's another thing I want to mention. Like, if you are a younger person, you may not... Because this takes place in another, in another time. It's a period piece, I'm going to say. Because this takes place in the day when everybody smoked. So there's, like, ashtrays everywhere. It takes place in the days when you didn't have a trunk release. So if you got locked in a trunk, you're screwed. I mean, there's no way getting out. So, like, you got to think of that stuff. It is a period piece. Um, the whole climate, social aspect of things, the way people were back then, it's all different than today. So I want to throw that out there if you happen to be, like, maybe a younger person in their 20s and you just don't know this stuff, you know? Like... But it is, yes, you have to remember that stuff when you're reading it because you're going to come across some scenes. You're going to be like, oh, hold up. What's going on here? Why didn't they just do this? But yeah, like I said, it is what it is. I gave it a 3 out of 5 star rating on Goodreads. It is worth reading and picking up. Um, I will read the novella in the back at some time. I don't know when I'm going to get to that, but I will. 
And uh, for you folks in the U.S., I will have a link to Amazon down below if you want to check this out for yourself. I do appreciate any and all purchases made through my links because it does help support my channel. I'm so close to reaching 1,000 subscribers. Um, but, you know, I gain some and then I lose some. And it's just this constant tug of war. Constant tug of war. Um, I'm also going to throw out my coffee link. If you don't mind buying me a coffee or two, help support my channel that way. And if you got something from watching this video, by all means, hit that subscribe button. And while you're there, hit that notification bell so you know when I upload again. Um, I don't upload every weekend like I used to. I used to be one of these people who would put out two to three videos every week, but I don't do that anymore. Um, I kind of upload them when I have time, when I'm feeling motivated. So, yeah. Um, as fact of the matter is, things go, I'm not getting paid to do this, I'm making very little from the affiliate links, and, you know, from donations, so it's not really very much, it's not, not enough for me to quit my job and do this full time, let's just say that. So this is all for fun, don't take life too seriously, kids. Till next time, stay healthy and be good to each other.